work then, eh? Like, this is E Max corner there. I got a nice spot where are they? Yeah, everything. Oh, look, doing the battery building for home. Oh, is there anything better than that? Oh, I opened this for order so you can see what's inside. But I'll come back here. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm just gonna show you my garage. I'm gonna have an electric car park it here maybe in like a few weeks or a month so I'm gonna have a strange uh, conversion electric vehicle conversion yeah so this is my truck I finally have enough room here to work around because before it was just like yeah I had this workbench in my previous workshop and I just had enough room to walk in front of the bench and the trike was sitting here there's some stuff sitting on top and I was like it's just a nightmare to work on I was kind of like this like you know like you go here you're like oh 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 and you walk again walk again and you turn around and oh it's just horrible man so now I can finally work on and get stuff done eh? like one year sitting there what a shame you know <laughs> like uh, it's just so waste to have all this money all this technology sitting there so this is a really cool charger, 2000 watts charger actually from servers, like computers, like big computers like this, right? Uh, so they require a lot of power, right? They're all controlled by CAN bus. You need to something like a little computer sending commands to it, like a, a start charging, stop charging. So it's, it's a bit trickier, right? So, but the battery sister can do stuff like that, right? So I actually got it here. So those are the bleeding uh, boards. So they're the ones that actually do the balancing. So this is the uh, battery that's gonna go on my trike over there, right? Really thick, pure copper, man. Like no BS here, huh? <laughs> so this active air cooling, it's gonna be epic, man. So let me show a bit more of my garage. So metal work tools, noisy stuff, grinding wheels, blah, 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 vacuum cleaner, fire extinguisher. So this is the most common fire extinguisher you see there. It's the cheapest one. It's actually like a the powder uh, fire extinguisher, right? So this is not really good. Once you use this, you're gonna regret, okay? So ideally, you're gonna spend a bit more money, gonna go to CO2 and get something cool like this, man. So I'm gonna actually show you. So I'm gonna show you here. Oh, shit, man, that's cold, man. Oh, it actually works really well. Alrighty, so oh, oh it's weird, but it worked. <laughs> Alright, so this is uh, my microscope, man. Look at this. Whoa! So here's where I inspect all my electronics and everything. Like a, you know, like a you 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 finish soldering something, you wanna check if your solder is beautiful. Like there's some stuff you can't really see with a naked eye. So you're gonna put it here, you're gonna check. Oh man, when you see here, you're like, wow, it's a different, different world, man, crazy. My beautiful JBC premium uh, soldering iron. Oh my God, I just love this. When you start soldering with this, there is no way back, that's it. This is the one, man. This is the Ferrari, the Maserati, whatever of the soldering iron, man. It's crazy, man. It melts uh, lead free solder like nothing, man, like butter. <laughs> so, yeah, my Fluke 289, amazing, man. Wireless connection here. This is amazing. Uh, I think I showed this in my previous video. My old oscilloscope here, analog, my function generator, my super expensive six and a half inch K site, oh man, bench multimeter. So much fun, man! Yeah, <laughs> and then this is my power supply. Pretty cool, man. I really love this. It's so handy. But I'm actually aiming to get a really big one. I do have some, but this one's got like very amazing controls here, like on and off and stuff. Uh, so yeah, my oscilloscope, two uh, channel HLint oscilloscope. This is my four channel uh, Rigo. It's got MSO functionalities here for digital uh, connections. So you can actually see the communication ports talking to each other and stuff. It's got 16 channels so you can just go and piggyback some spots on the PCB and, and do the reading. Uh, yeah, my electronic stuff here. I got some solar cells here. Where is that? Oh, we're dropping something here, whatever. So this is nice. Uh, solar cells here see they, they, they don't have like uh, anything to interfere here so this is like really amazing efficiency man I'm gonna put it facing down here I'll have some other projects to show you this <laughs> right so oh yeah what else what else time to go 
Oh, oh yeah, I've got my segue here because sometimes when I hurt my shoulder, my arms or my wrist or something. So this is my backup plan when I can't ride a bike, right? So I just get on my segue, put my helmet with the speaker. I have a speaker in my helmet and then just go crazy, man. Ah, so this is Emax, man. Oh, that's a temporary Emax. So we've been making batteries today here. So look, it's matching the grass in the background, man. Beautiful green, man. Ooh. So two little packs here. This is for a project. Uh, we, yeah, it's kind of fun. Even if they're small, man. Every project is fun. <laughs> so this is another. Uh, this is a prototype we're making for something that's gonna kind of like a fly. <laughs> Pretty epic, man. Nice. Lots of juice here. Mm. And this is the nice spot welder, super expensive, man. industrial, man, awesome. And you see here, this is the nickel uh, tabs that we use for most of battery build. So you see here, here I label everything, I like everything organized. So 0.17 millimeter thickness, and this is for uh, 0.6 millimeter spacing. What does it mean? So uh, when you see here, so there's a space between this cell and this cell. So this is 0.6 millimeter, but most of cell holders actually two, no, actually like, uh, yeah, like two millimeter spacing, like this one here, right? See like, two millimeter spacing cell holder and 0.2 millimeter thick right so there are a bit of a variations here look like a uh, 0.17 thickness and this one two millimeter spacing yeah and this one is offset as you see here right so a lot of fun stuff here crimpers for the most common things Anderson uh, connectors here they're pretty common some people love it some people are like oh this is old man but this is really handy okay so like especially when you're prototyping but you know they, they they have like a maximum current if we need anything a little bit more and then we step up to xt90 and if it's not good enough we step up to big andersons or whatever is available for that particular project got some fuse here so fuse for like some horrible batteries they 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 have a, a nasty bms and then they put fuse to try to you know compensate for all the horrible stuff that they, they didn't design well. Got BMS, you got lots of charges here, uh, got more BMS. This is all for this a lot of contract work we get from companies here. They they need someone servicing and fixing the uh, warranty client batteries. So they send everything to us, we fix whatever we can, and then we send it back to them, you know, like refurbished pack or whatever they want to do. Uh, we got some uh, Lecky, which is a buffet kits here, right? So Lecky battery, we've been selling for one year, the same battery, never fail, not even one. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, some Mac Hub motors here. They're pretty epic, man. If you put a lot of current here, oh man, they're awesome, really powerful, man. I love this motor. It's so torquey, oh man. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Got some batteries here, or some, uh, uh, oh man, these batteries went for swim in the ocean. Got some conductive salty water inside. See all this white mark here, this is all salt. Salt, man, this thing is like frying, man, like in sea water, <laughs> super conductive. Oh man, don't know what to do now, man. That's, oh, don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> so, we got the battery discharger test here. So uh, we, it's actually, oh, we have another one here. So this is connected to the cyclone list here. And then we pick up data from the cyclone list. We got a little shunt here, right? And then we're just reading the data that process here. Oh, got a USB connector connected here. And then we get voltage side. We get a nice graph here. I think I have somewhere. Oh, nice graph data. Mm, yeah, something like this, right? And then do a screenshot, and I'll make my little comment there, right? So yeah, this has got a, it's old, but it's still pumping, man. Hmm. Right, so this is, uh, I made something temporary here in 2015, and it was still using because it works, right? Some uh, 100 watts, uh, 12 volt car light bulbs. So I was like, oh, just connect in series and parallel for more current and more voltage. And it's still working, man. Ah, oh, like this, it does the job. We can measure things, you know, the way we want. And if you want more power, 
We use this amazing resistors here, man. Thousand watts here. I know the thousand watts here. I know the thousand watts here. I know the thousand watts here. And then we just connect in series in parallel, and it's awesome, man. This is uh, like a massive heater, like pumping here, man. Not very pleasant in summer, but awesome in winter, man. Like oh, cold days is just oh, he would love this. So this is a cemetery here, man. Like mechanical buffet and some other stuff. Uh, cemetery here. So this is nothing, you know. Like uh, been fixing these motors for two and a half years. This is some stuff that like oh, yeah, there's a little thing here, a little thing there that's taking too much time. And then we just put it to the side. And then one day we're gonna come and revisit this and um, get it fixed. Almost everything here is fixable, right? Uh, so we just keep here in the box. So here there's some motors we open after 15,000 Ks to check the wear and tear. We open three times, like at 5, 10 and 15,000 Ks just to see how it's going. Uh, the, that's the Bafeng Max drive. And I was just a bit lazy to close because we were being flooded with more work here, right? Uh, what else? So I got some LGM J1 cells. I think there's 600 cells here. And there's some more stuff in a different storage. They want to keep everything here, right? And like, yeah, battery build, battery build stuff. Uh, this is the foot switch for the spot welder. Uh, and then there's some, ah, oh, let's just me move this thing. So more cell holders, a bit of everything here, you see. You know, like uh, like 13S, 14S, 4P, 3P, different type of plastic. What is the other one? So this one is, is pretty nice. Like it doesn't look so good, but like it's super light. And yeah, I mean, holds the cell so well, man. Prototype, this one. Um, and then got some fiberglass. That's what we use uh, to uh, like protect the batteries when we finish here, right? So and then we make a layer of fiberglass protecting everything in case of an impact. It's actually pretty good, pretty resistant. And fiberglass, man, it's actually heat resistant, almost fireproof, depending on the thickness and how, you know, like how you do this. It can be fireproof, man. And then we cut the fiberglass in the guillotine here, as you see, and then we got jack, 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 cut to shape. We got a compressor here for the uh, spot welder. So the spot welder, man, let me press the, let me press the button here. I'm not gonna do any welding here. I'm just sit here on the bench, man. And then I'm gonna sit here, no weld. Yeah, so, and then you see, there's like a pulse one, 20 watts per second. So this is for this particular thickness here in this particular uh, nickel strip we're using, right? If there's anything different or more layers, you need to readjust this, okay? So it, it, every case is different. There's a lot of variations here, mechanical things, like, uh, so this is the air pressure adjustment. So one is uh, to bring welding head up and down. Look, uh, I'll, I'll show you here, see if you can see. Yeah, see? One brings up, one brings it down, yeah? And then we got this uh, spring tension here, right? So this controls the tension. So as soon as the head goes down, so there's an individual pressure for the left, individual pressure for the right. So sometimes you want a one uh, with more pressure than the other because the positive uh, contact actually sticks more than the negative, right? Even when you connect battery connectors, you always get the spark on the positive side, right? So just notice this, if you, especially if you have Anderson connectors, you can actually tell the positive is always the one that's always wearing, okay? So same happens here when you're doing spot welding. So yeah, foot pedal here, man. And I go again, again, channel. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I don't want to flick to weld because I don't have anything here. But you see there's some work here that I just did today. It looks pretty epic, man! Oh! These are so quick making this, man. So I would say, okay, with my experience here, so 50, or well, 45% of the weld is actually to do with this and the rest is to do with the electronics here, right? But this is really important. Once you start to making batteries, you're like, and with this, and you're like, wow, what a difference, man. No wonder why all the professional gear, they all use a pneumatic head. It's not because it makes it easier. It makes everything super consistent, very reliable. Uh, I'm just gonna show a little bit of the electronics here. Uh, you see here, this is a massive transformer here. There's a massive, let me bring the light here so you can see what's inside. So there's a massive transformer here, right? So it's a massive brick, so this weight, 70 kilos thanks to this guy here so and then you have these massive resistors there so what happened is when you dump all this load to the batteries for the for the spot welding 
So you just use a fraction of the energy. You need to dump whatever was not used back to the resistors. Otherwise, something's gonna explode here. There's too much energy flowing there, so it dumps back to the resistor, right? And then you see here this uh, capacitor bank here. Oh, so capacitor they deliver power man like instantly like doof, okay battery transformers they have a bit of a delay like a ramp capacitor super capacitor they instant man they just go ah, man so much power man Ugh, capacitors man right so i've been talking for too much 17 minutes 39 oh uh, yeah i got some super capacitors here man i'm gonna be uh, pairing this thing with my uh e-bike battery and do some tests in a small scale and then if you like i'm gonna get big one uh, i've been talking to maxwell super capacitors and i might be getting something to power this monster man you know like super capacitors are good man they have like i think 10 million cycles man it's awesome mm.